Hi, this is Andrew Klein. Uh, today I have a video for you covering how to create a torso sculpting from a Z-Sketch base using some of the new features in ZBrush 3.5, specifically the new Z-Sphere 2 Z-Sketching ability. Now, what I've got here is uh, I'm starting out with a Z-Sphere armature base. Um, I'm drawing out a Z-Sphere onto my canvas, and you'll notice I'll be doing this in time lapse and kind of pausing as I go. Uh, drawing this out on my canvas uh, using uh, edit mode and uh, my draw tool will allow me to add in new Z spheres to this chain. Uh, using my move and scale tools and of course the rotate tool as well I'm able to um, change the position, scale, and rotation of these Z spheres to create what we refer to as a armature and that's what I'm making here now. This is sort of the traditional Z sphere construction if you're familiar with Z spheres from ZBrush 2 or ZBrush 3.1 or 3.2 this is the same construction process so far. Now once I continue along with this armature here I'm, I'm adding in a couple of uh, limbs obviously even though I'm just doing the torso and that's going to give me some um, elements to attach my Z sketch Z spheres onto in just a minute. Um, I'm inserting a couple of uh, Z spheres as I go by using the draw tool and clicking on the link spheres um, and that's how I'm able to get these inserted Z spheres you see now putting onto the arms. Uh, doing a couple of proportional manipulations gets me to about here. Now I've created a fully developed armature and uh, one of the things I want to do on top of this armature is utilize some of the new Z sketch features. So I can do one of two things. I can hit Shift A on my keyboard, which will allow me to switch over to the Z Sketch mode. Or as you see I've done here, I've gone into my Z Sketch uh, subtool palette and just enabled the Z Sketch mode. Um, that will allow me, as soon as I switch over, to instead of drawing out Z spheres for the armature, it will allow me to sketch right on top of the surface, as you see here. Now, I start off first with the armature brush, uh, the armature Z-Sphere brush. This allows me to cut, put in a couple of, I think, basic landmarks that I can attach things to. Uh, that's kind of what I'm doing in this process, just putting on a couple little globby landmarks. Uh, using the shift button, I can smooth out these Z-Spheres, and I'm using Smooth 1 right now. The Smooth 1 brush will allow these Z-Spheres to kind of flow into the already existing Z-Sphere armature. I'm going to switch back and forth primarily between Smooth 1, which does as you see here, tapering this into the armature, and Smooth 4, which kind of creates more of a, a bulgy shape, really good for muscles. Uh, and those will be my two primary smooth modes as I work through creating this Z-Sphere base. So I'm going to smooth some of these armature Z-spheres out into the form. And then I'm going to start working with the uh, Z-sphere sort of sketch one brush. And this is going to allow me to draw out some basic muscle mass onto the form. So I'm roughing in some of where I think the basic muscle groups are going to be and putting in the abdominal muscles. Um, I can switch to my move brush at any point in time, or sorry, move tool at any point in time, and uh, grab some of these spheres and just move them around as well. Um, so I don't have to just sketch them, I can move them additionally. And you'll see that's a little bit of what I'm doing here into my tweaking. Continue back onto my sketching, and I'm sketching and smoothing, continuously working back and forth, doing a little bit of move manipulation as well, and bulking up some general form onto the body, uh, trying to bulk in the direction of the muscles and smoothing as I go to kind of pare things down. Uh, one of the things you'll notice uh, is that as you start building up layers on top of layers, you'll have Z-spheres underneath, or at least these Z-sketch spheres underneath. Um, you can at any point in time choose the Optimize feature under Tool, Z-sketch, Optimize, and that will sort of remove out any of the underlying Z-spheres if you need to clean up the density of your surface. Now as I continue on here, um, I'm just going to continue bulking out some of these other little muscle forms, even though, again, I'm just going to be doing a torso. And uh, finishing up essentially what would be my Z-Sphere sketch. Now, once I have this sketched out, there's obviously two things I can do with this. Um, one, I can turn this into a unified skin, or I can turn it into an adaptive skin. Now, the unified skin will give me a much closer representation to what I have here right now, um, giving me sort of every little form, but it's going to give me a very dense polygon count. The adaptive skin will give me a lower polygon count, but may not capture all of the forms. Um, 
So in this process, what I'm actually going to do is use a unified skin and then use the retopology tools to create not just my lower polygon count, but to create the actual direction and grid flow of uh, what I'll eventually need for any sort of animatable edge loops. So as I proceed on here, one of the things I can also do is I can come in and repose part of my armature. Um, what I've done is I've left the Z sketch mode. I've turned off edit Z sketch under the Z sketch sub palette. Uh, and I've pressed the button just to the side of it, which is show Z sketch. And doing that has enabled me to kind of see this ghostly outline. Now, by hitting the bind button, I can attach the Z sketch to the armature, which means that when I come in and grab my rotate tool, when I rotate my armature, my Z sketch is going to move with it. I've got a couple of bind settings here as well, such as uh, smoothness, which will allow me to control fall off on things like the back muscles or something as the arms move outwards. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to test my unified skins. And as I'm looking around here, I have several Z um, settings for unified skin uh, that can control smoothness and other things. I've just chosen a relatively non-complicated setting, which has allowed me to see uh, a resolution which is pretty dense, but has um, most of those Z spheres kind of locked in. Once I've got that, under the unified skin subpalette, I'm going to hit make unified skin, and that's going to give me a new tool in the subpalette or in the tool palette which I have accessed now, which has multiple levels of resolution. So once I have this tool and I have all of these levels of resolution laid in, um, I'm going to use this base as something to retopologize off of. This is kind of like a little clay figure that I can then build my actual topology from. I'll switch back to a Z sphere again and open up a couple of the lower palettes or sub palettes under the tool palette, palettes such as rigging and topology. Um, under the rigging palette, I'm going to choose Select Mesh, and I'm going to select that unified skin, which I had made just a second ago. And under the Topology palette, I'm going to hit Edit Topology. Now, once I've hit Edit Topology, as you see here, I can just draw out with my Draw tool the faces that I will need for my um, low poly model. And as I click, click, connect, I'm creating little vertices and faces for the surface. And I'm using my Z sketch base as sort of a rough form, again, building form on top of form, uh, eventually creating what would be a good animatable structure. And that's what I'm working through here. Going pretty fast, of course, because this is in time lapse. Uh, making sort of an edge loop that goes around the arm, and again, sort of wrapping up through the torso. Um, and even though this doesn't fit exactly to my anatomical needs just yet, I think it's going to be really easy once I have this base laid in to then start sculpting on top of it. So moving pretty quickly here through the retopologization process. When I get pretty close here to the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into an adaptive skin. Uh, that will create sort of a one-to-one -one comparison from the amount of faces that I've drawn here to what I have here. And I'll have multiple levels of resolution throughout this. Now, once I turn this into an adaptive skin, I can use all of my sculpting brushes to create uh, definition on this form. I'm using the move brush right now to do any tweaks of proportion that I feel I need to do, and there'll be numerous of those, sort of bulking in anatomical features like the rib cage or the pectoral muscles. I divide my model once or twice to give a little bit of extra form to it, and then I just go wild with the clay brush, um, looking at my muscle groups first, my pectoral muscles, my abdominal muscles, um, bulking in the muscles along the side, the obliques here, uh, put in a little bit of rib cage underneath, Go to the back and I can put in uh, my latissimus dorsi muscle and my trapezius muscle working to the deltoids onto the shoulder. And I'm using the clay brush really to get in these forms uh, very, very quickly. Um, continuously making move tweaks as I go, dividing my model a little bit further and I can kind of rough in some of these forms more and more. And again, as you see here, as we kind of wrap this up, um, with this Z sketch base, I was very quickly able to get a form in retopologize it, and then come out with something that I can sculpt very, very quickly, um, getting some intricate form uh, within 20, 30 minutes. And that, I think, is really the power of these uh, Z-Sphere, the new Z-Sphere combinations of using the traditional armature and this new Z-Sketch. Uh, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed a look at this um, as I continue to flatten this up and sort of finish it off. Uh, this has been Andrew Klein, and for more videos, uh, please visit andrewkline.net 
uh, or climbmakelearngood.com. So again, hope you enjoy this one. Uh, enjoy ZBrush 3.5.